It is a very bad idea shorting a shipping stock when you have a political and military crisis on the Suez Canal with no end in sight. When you have droughts on the Panama Canal with shipping rates skyrocketing and thousands of people just shorting the stock. We are in the middle of a short squeeze. The date marked on everyone's calendar is 21st of May 2024, that is tomorrow. But the day that should interest us the most, according to me, is 24th of May 2024, that is next Thursday. That is next Friday. It is when the New York Stock Exchange will release its latest short interest numbers. This is how we will know what percentage of the float of Zim is shown. The current numbers we have are till the end of April. Only when we have the latest numbers, we'll know for sure if a short squeeze is happening or not. And we will know what is our exit strategy on this short squeeze. Just like with GameStop in 2019, when I invested in the company, I discovered that short squeeze almost before everyone else. This guy will never stop complaining that Netflix did not make a movie about him. Coming back to Sim, it is important to know when to buy a stock and when to sell it. It applies to any other stock. But in the case of Zim, the stock was so volatile that it was even more important. I first looked at Zim in 2022 and I will never forget this day, 10th of October 2022. I just posted my first video ever about Zim telling you why I'm not investing in the company. Minutes after I got the call that my father passed away. These are days you never forget. I did not invest in Zim back then. And the main reason behind it was that the dividends that many investors were focusing on was not going to be sustainable. Their dividend yield was over 100%. But it is related to cash flows. The more cash flows the company is generating, the more they are going to pay investors, shareholders in dividends. Everyone knows that. The company doesn't lie about that. And nobody in their right mind should have believed that this 100% dividend yield was well sustainable long term. But unfortunately, many believe in that and they invested in Zim. That's why even today, many are focusing on the dividends of Zim, whether tomorrow Zim is going to announce another dividend again. Because shipping rates are now higher, their cash flows are higher, which means they can probably afford to pay a dividend again. But nobody can predict this. Actually, I believe that it is better for Zim to wait a little before paying a dividend because nobody, not even the company, knows for sure where shipping rates are going to be in the coming quarters, in the coming years. It is better to be prepared for anything and to have some cash on hand instead of just rushing and paying a dividend. All of these models that you see people building using spreadsheet, using Excel, trying to predict where shipping rates are going to be in the future and what will be the stock price of Zim, none of these work. You are going to have a drought all of a sudden, you are going to have a pandemic all of a sudden and everything changes. None of these models work. And we need to focus on what we can predict when making investments, such as smashing the like button. There are a few questions that we need to ask ourselves whenever we are making investments. And in the case of Zim, the questions we should be asking ourselves, first one is, will Zim always be here? If you're thinking five years, 10 years, 15 years in the future, will the business of Zim be in operation? This business has been around since 1945. So it is very likely that the business will still be around because shipping will always be needed. We don't have an alternative to shipping right now. If you want to transport goods throughout the world, the sea, this is what we use. There is no alternative. Maybe if you're lucky, you can even see some, no, we are not lucky today. It is true that over the long term, there are businesses that maybe take too much debt, they go bankrupt, they fail. This is true. But the business of Zim is cyclical. It's not because today it seems that the business is struggling, that this will continue long term. And that's why you need to be careful with cyclical businesses. You never know where you are in the cycle. And probably you should be buying when everyone is selling, when we are at a low point in the cycle. So how do you know if a cyclical stock is a good one or not? You need to look at an average. It applies for any other stock, but for cyclical stocks, it has much more importance because you don't know where you are in the cycle. You take an average. If there is a recession, we are in a bear market, what happens to the cash flows of the company? If we are in a bull market, 
what happens to the cash flows of the company. So you take into consideration all of this and then you calculate an average cash flow that you're sure with a high probability, with a high certainty that the company can generate. This is the amount of cash that it can generate every year. To calculate this number, you don't only look at the cash flows, you look at the debt, how much debt they have to repay, pay an oversupply of ships in the market like right now. This is something that happens with every commodity industry. When we are in a bull market, everyone is going to buy more of the stuff that is making them rich and there's going to be an oversupply. For example, if you're investing in an oil company, you will see that when oil prices are higher, they all want to produce even more oil and they create an oversupply. They want to maximize profits. If they were smart, probably they should have done the opposite. But when your competitors are increasing revenues at double digits, you want to do the same. Otherwise, your shareholders are going to be unhappy. The next question will be how much money can Zim make in that period. So we take an average, let's say for the next five, 10 years, assuming maybe we'll have a recession or two recessions. So you take an average with high certainty, how much money Zim can produce, can generate, and then you discount it at a proper rate. This is how you calculate the intrinsic value of Zim, of a cyclical stock. You take a margin of safety, and if it is undervalued, then probably it is a good investment, but for the long term, because you never know what is going to happen going forward in the coming month or years. This is a long-term game. That short-term thinking was a mistake that many made following the attacks on Israel in October of 2023. The Monday following the attacks, the shares of Zim along with other Israeli companies crashed because the market was worried of what was going to happen next. But if you think about it, should you really be worried? Because the fundamentals of Zim did not change at all. It's not because of an ongoing war that Israeli people, all these millions of people, they will stop eating. Food needs to be transported. Other materials need to be transported. And it's not just Israel. Zim is a company with businesses all around the world. The shares of Zim were around $7 back then with 19% of the float short. And you will see that the shares kept falling. It means that those people who shorted at $7, they are losing more money than they have shorted. That's the thing with shorting. You can lose more money than you have if, of course, they do not cover. And we are not counting the interest they have to pay on borrowing those shares. As the situation in the Middle East worsened, the stock price of Zim kept falling. Maybe the short sellers were happy and they shorted even more. At some point, I was down 60% on Zim. But since I was focusing on the long term, I kept investing. I wasn't worried of what was happening in the short term. Of course, I did not know what was going to happen. I stayed updated on City Falcon. City Falcon is, by the way, today's video So so This is a tool that I use every day to look at what's happening in the market, what's happening in the economy. You need to stay away from the news, but when you can filter the news to know what exactly you want to see, the news that applies to your portfolio, to your watch list, what you want to follow, you can do all of that on City Falcon. Tomorrow, Zim is going to report earnings and I'm going to get the news about the earnings from City Falcon itself. If you're interested, you can have a 25% of any subscription of City Falcon using the promo code ISHFAQ. I didn't know that the bad guys was going to terrorize the Red Sea. I did not even know that they had these capabilities. I did not know that the Panama Canal drought was going to get worse. And I got all this news, of course, gradually from City Falcon. But all of this does affect the business of Zim and consequently the cash flow and the stock price. This doesn't change the fact that 22% of the float of Zim is now short, down from 29%. This means that many short sellers already covered and the short squeeze is happening. What many don't understand about short squeezes is that it can happen in a single day, like it happened with Volkswagen Group in 2008 or across several weeks with GameStop in 2021 and maybe even throughout years like with our edge. So we never know what is going to happen with Zim. Will it be on just one day, quite a few years, a few decades? It all depends how fast the short sellers are going to capitulate. They will need to cover their shorts. What's important is always to take it like a bonus. I never invested in GameStop because of the short squeeze. I always look at the short squeeze as a bonus. If it happened, great, okay, I make a lot of money. The same for Zim, it is a bonus. Today, Zim is 3.5% of my portfolio. And based on my conservative analysis, it has reached its intrinsic value. Does this mean that it's time to take profit? I always say, don't sell your low. I always say, don't sell, keep.
I always say that you need to keep your winners. Let your winners run. That's the quote. Let your winners run. Because you never know how high the stock is going to be. But of course, at some point, you don't want it to be 10% of your portfolio. It is a risky cyclical stock. Even though the business might be good, but it is still a cyclical stock. So you need to know when you take profit. For me, I won't give you a specific number, but 3.5%, I'm comfortable with that. Maybe if it reaches 4%, I will reconsider. But what's more important is on the 24th of May. If Zim has bad earnings, I will hold because I'm in it for the long term, even if the stock price falls down. If now Zim has great earnings, the stock, let's say, skyrockets, then I will need to reconsider what needs to happen next. But I would not rush. I would not rush to sell immediately. I would prefer to wait for the 24th to know exactly how many shares are short. If let's say the number of shares short fall below 10%, it means the short squeeze is over. That additional bonus is over. Then probably I will be selling a little faster because we don't have this bonus anymore. But let's say the flow short is still high. Then probably I can hold to even 4% on my portfolio. So even though I'm in it for the long term, you need to be strategic about this because a short squeeze is happening and you don't know where in which direction the stock price is going to go. It's not like with this stock that Warren Buffett is investing in. There is more certainty when there is an orbit hash. Have a nice day and goodbye.